Here we are. Is it working? Who knows? We'll see. So, yeah, so just finished a beer review. So I thought I would test out the new live stream and feature on YouTube with the top five favorite beers, desert beer style, whatever it is, tag thing that's been going around. Uh, I was tagged by Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. Um, so, yeah, let's go on with it, shall we? Let's do it. Going to have another sip. Mm. Speak of the devil and she, he shall appear. Hello, Craig. So, first of all, this is, oh, I suppose it's in, in order. So, first we're going for just lager. Simple as that, but good lager. So, I'm talking Paulana, Augustina. I even had like a brilliant one at Beaverex last year, which was a collaboration between um, uh, did a, ba, 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 other half and Interborough. They, they did like a uh, into half like Heller's lager, and that that was that was damn tasty. But yeah, it's just there's just nothing better than cracking open a cold lager. Simple as that. Not too cold, but just cold enough. Mm. Uh, next, I sort of was wrecking my brains, and, and I'm a I'm a huge sour beer fan, but I didn't particularly know how to categorize them. So I'm, so this just all sort of sour beer. All together, really. So, it, so I'm a big fan of the McKellar Spontan series. Uh, I think they're absolutely fantastic beers. A uh, huge fan of a brewery around my way called Little Earth Project, and they all of their beers are sour. They they make sort of historic style of beers, and most of those are sour. So they're damn good. I like kettle sours if they're if they're done well and they actually have a nice like sour kick to them. Um. What, I'm just trying to think of any particular. I'm, I sort of just quickly wrote, wrote some notes down, trying to do it a little bit off the cuff. So I can't particularly think of them. Um, and it's very late, and I can't particularly think of any any particular beers that are jumping to mind. But sours, just in general, really. And then I think a little bit outside that, going on to the third one, has to be lambics. Um, so obviously it's it's a sour style, but like. Traditional lambics from beer sale from Boone um, had a brilliant one um, last year from Mills Brewing, who uh, I, I don't know actually how many beers they produced, but that that was a big beer. It was their it was their Fox Bic, which was their take on lambic style, and uh, that was it was great to sort of see a, a British brewery sort of like nailing that lambic style really. But uh, obviously they can call it a lambic, but. That's what it was. It was lambic inspired, I suppose. But yeah, you just, you just can't beat a, a, a traditional, well-made lambic. And Gers, um, I feel like I'm rattling through this pretty quick, but I'm, I'm tired and I, and I just want to sort of get it done. Hopefully, this this might pep me up. It's a it's a mocha stout with coffee. Review coming soon. Cheers. Um, oh, which uh, good segue into the next style, uh, which is and uh, which is imperial stout. Uh, absolutely love imperial stouts, um, and and sort of like I, I love the adjunct stuff. I love the good stuff from Omnipolo, the the stuff from McKellar, Two Old, all, all those sorts of producers. But also, I like just a straight imperial stout. A good example recently was Layers from Burnt Mill. That was only 8%, so sort of just bordering on, on Imperial, but it was it's like damn good. And that was just a straight stout, no adjuncts, but you still got like a rich, roasty coffee quality to it. Nice, thick, silky mouthfeel. Uh, and, and, you, and you can't beat that. I, lo I love it when, because I love like adjuncts and beers. I love sort of crazy flavoured beers, but you can't beat it when they just use the four base ingredients and they create all these flavors and i think imperial stout when done well like you don't actually need adjuncts you get chocolate you get coffee you get like red berry vibes you get like fig and raisin and all that sort of thing so yeah so yeah i think it's a deserving number two in my list of top five favorite styles um and then number one it has to be, and I think it's number one for, for many a person. It has to be IPA. It's the beer style I drink the most of. It's the beer style that sort of got me away from 
the sort of traditional beers I would drink. I was drinking the sort of American adjunct lagers and sort of like the crappy real ale that I was drinking. And it was the West Coast IPA that made me sort of go, oh, beer can be like really flavoursome. So it was it was that that got, got me into it. And then obviously now you get the super hazy, murky IPAs. You get the even like session IPAs recently I've been really enjoying just because breweries have been able to produce session IPAs that that rival sort of like the, the big double IPAs in terms of mouthfeel, in terms of flavour. They're not like thin and sipid things anymore. They are nice, hazy juice bombs. Um, and saying that, I still like enjoy going back to to sort of West Coast IPAs and uh, the, the more the more bitter side uh, and, and and I think with IPA, I mean you can get rye IPA, black IPA, all these like different different variations on 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 that one type of beer, and I think that's why I like it so much that you can have like six IPAs in the fridge and they're all different from each other, which there's not many styles you can you can say that about uh, about beer, so that's that's definitely <coughs> a deserving number one place. Um, I feel like I've rattled through these pretty quick, but that's that's my style. You know my my channel. I I, I keep things short and snappy. But um, yeah, oh, I can see Craig's still watching. So cheers, mate. Thanks for thanks for the tag. So so I better tag people. I haven't actually thought of anyone to tag because I think absolutely everybody has been tagged already. Um, so if you've watched everyone else's beer reviews and you still haven't been tagged then I'm tagging you, nameless person. There we go. Cheers.